Hey Taurus, how are you? My name is Lauren B, LB, that's me. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. I have two decks that I'm gonna use for you this week. I have the Shaman's Dream Oracle, and I also have the Rider Weight Tarot for you. Taurus, when I tapped into your energy, very quickly I heard activation and an invitation. So, it feels like you may be going through like awakening or ascension symptoms right now that you might not be aware that that is what is going on with you. Of course, if there's something serious or very prolonged going on with your body, please go see a medical physician. But you might be experiencing kind of bouts of like ascension flu or, or something like that. Um, it does feel like an activation is coming in for you. I, it's not here yet, but it feels like it's very quickly on its way. And it feels like part of its purpose is to kind of shake you up out of a bit of a rut. And I'm wondering if part of pulling you out of this rut, Taurus, has to do with an invitation. When I had shuffled the Oracle deck for you, two cards had flown out, one of which was Straddling Worlds. Wandering Between Realms and Falling Angel, Spiritual Narcolepsy. And so it feels like Taurus, when it comes to your spiritual development, you've hit a bit of a plateau. You've kind of leveled out. Um, and it's time for you to learn some new skills. Um, but it feels like the activation that's coming in may be helping to attune you to whatever new spiritual gifts or abilities are kind of coming online for you, coming out of dormancy. Um, this may also aid you in pulling your life out of stagnancy. If you just feel like in general, you're in a bit of a rut, right? Um, it feels very spiritually like unnourished. And sometimes that happens when we're talking to the same energies or we're ingesting the same kind of spiritual content or we're not continuing our education journey, right? Um, spirituality is a, is a lifelong pursuit, right? But there is an element of continuing education to continue to study and learn about new things and different practices and history and, and anthropology, like so all of these things, right? Different aspects of psychology. It just feels like spiritually you're just a little bit malnourished or you're just running a little bit dry right um and so there does seem to be this activation with an invitation coming soon after in which to kind of pull you up into a higher possibility for yourself which i personally hope kind of improves the quality of your life as well now let's pray now that we've kind of gotten through your your general energy let's say a little prayer as we do and then we'll pull a few tarot cards and we'll see what else wants to come out. Yes? Father God, thank you for bringing me and my Torians in for this reading. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Taurus's highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages to the utmost high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's see. Let's see, Taurus. So one more thing with this straddling worlds card, I see you stretching here. I'm wondering if you've been stretching or reaching for more information. Maybe it's information about where you're going or information about your past lives or just some kind of universal. Not It feels like you're reaching for something, but it feels as though you haven't been sitting in a neutral or objective enough perspective in order to actually grab onto this information the higher up the tiers that you go in spiritual development and pulling in sort of the the magic that is behind the curtain right um the more neutral your perspective has to be right because there's less and less duality or polarity the higher up you go and so if you have been kind of reaching and then slinking back down that's likely what's been happening but again this activation is coming in to kind of break through some of this debris and pull you out of this sort of spiritual and or personal plateau so let's see let's see what else wants to come out for you <clears throat> okay rock on 
rock on. Okay, let's see, the Four of Pentacles. So, it feels like you have a steady reserve, Cancer, of wisdom, of life experience, um, maybe even physical resources, like you have enough to get by, like money isn't the big, and money's a stressor for everyone, but not the biggest stressor for you. Um, it feels like you have this kind of gold chest, this reserve of everything, but it doesn't feel like you're doing anything with it. We sit on the Four of Pentacles, but you don't use or spend the Four of Pentacles, right? And again, with this energy of change <clears throat> that kind of wants to come in for you, I think it's about using what it is that you have, right? Like you're sitting on a lot of abilities. You're sitting on a lot of talent. This can even go very practically. Like you're sitting on a lot of practical business, creative um, type of skills, and you're not really utilizing them. It reminds me of like, when I was little and all of my teachers used to say like, you know, she's really advanced and like she's really precocious, but she just doesn't apply herself. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that energy, but <clears throat> there is this queen of swords that is being presented. This feels like a deeply conservative approach. The queen of swords is not the most expressive character in the deck, right? Um, and Taurus, you our creature of comfort, right? You like your routines. You like the four of pentacles. Like you're happy in that. And it, sometimes there are certain kind of safe ways that you will present yourself or your work or kind of show up in the world. But it feels like there is something that is a little bit more unconventional or a little bit more individual, something that is a little bit more unique in its expression that wants to come through for you. But that might be outside of your comfort zone, right? So again, these could be aspects of your personality, personal skills that you have. Maybe you're a fantastic singer. These could be spiritual gifts that you have and you're not sharing with others or you're not fully utilizing them or you're not speaking up about them because I do feel my throat chakra all of a sudden getting a little funny. I did your monthly reading for January yesterday too and my throat chakra <clears throat> was going off. So that is definitely something that I would advise you work on a little bit. Gar gargle a little salt water. Singing, maybe that's why they mentioned singing. Singing will really help unblock that throat chakra. Um, working with like some blue crystals, like a like a blue quartz or an obsidian, something like that, that, that may help you. Um, but the sun is coming in. <clears throat> and so oftentimes when we look at the sun, it's talking about this rebirthing energy, right? It's this naked baby on a horse, right? And so <clears throat> there's this aspect of you that actually might still in very many ways be in its infancy stage that wants to come forward. You might be just taking on, right, with this activation or this invitation. You might be being invited to share information, share a talent, um, a skill, something you know, right, with others before you feel as though you have matured into a position to share that information. Um, <clears throat> or these may be aspects of yourself that you are still very much still nurturing. And so to bring them out in front of other people before you even feel sure about them or you even feel confident that you know what you're talking about or you've even gotten used to them, that's going to feel super uncomfortable, right? But I do feel the fool card energy. They're showing me the fool card in my mind. And so there is a little bit of this energy of like a leap of faith um, to kind of just allow yourself to learn and express and share mid process. I'm wondering if this is a little bit of <clears throat> a lesson in perfectionism. Because oftentimes until it's like when you hide yourself all winter so that way you can come out in the summer with like your perfect summer body, right? Or you don't want to start making videos or doing something on a platform until you feel like you're an expert in the subject, right? And I totally understand that tendency. I'm a rising Libra. I got perfectionists all, all over this, all over this stories. But that being said, sometimes you learn best hands on in the middle of it. I find that I learn things best when I learn them and then I share them. I used to do this in college when I'd learn material. 
in my courses and I'd go back to my apartment and I'd sit in a group in front of all of my girlfriends just passing around some some wacky tobacco and I would just sit there and I'd rattle off what I learned in class and I'd rattle off what I learned in my notes right and by explaining it to them I actually learned it better so sometimes we do learn better hands-on and sometimes we do grow in confidence by being in the middle of something even if in the beginning it feels really uncomfortable the approach that your hat that you've had thus far has been to ensure some kind of stability right proper pacing keep you comfortable let's not do anything too crazy over here and I think that worked for a season but after a while it does start to feel a little dull you will hit a plateau when you're just sitting on information and you're not properly using it that's why in the patreon workshop that I run for spiritual development I added in zoom groups <clears throat> that allow everyone to have a place to practice their healing, practice their psychic defense, practice their reading, practice these things. Because your gifts, your talents, whether they're spiritual or whether they are earthly, it's like a muscle, right? If you don't use it, it will atrophy. And so part of this activation is to come to shake up any of this fear that you have about kind of expressing yourself or learning on the move, learning as you go, um, showing these aspects of yourself that maybe you don't feel fully developed yet, but it feels like they will be developed further as you accept these invitations to be present, to participate, right? <clears throat> right, say right, Lauren. Yeah, 10 of swords in reverse. The swords, like they're, they're falling out. <clears throat> this is an indicator that like freedom is yours. Like you are free to go. Like you are free to wake up and, and kind of make your move. Like the Jeffersons, right? Like move on up. Um, but it might not feel like that sometimes, right? It's coming in for, in many ways, Taurus. This is you coming out of Groundhog's Day. <clears throat> Cause you need something more. That's the thing with the spiritual narcolepsy. It's like, you need something new to like sink your teeth in or to be like really interested in. I get that. For me right now, it's Hinduism. I am all about Hinduism, learning all about the pantheon, the mythology. Like I am like a kid in a candy shop. I'm like, I love it, right? And that really kind of sparks my interest. That might, it might not be Hinduism for you. It might be quantum jumping. It might be baking cakes. Like you, it doesn't matter, but it's like, you just need something new to sink your teeth in and be excited about, right? Because it puts you back into that page energy. As adults, oftentimes we walk around as kings and queens and, and emperors, and it's the idea of responsibility, right? Needing to have all of the answers. Um, and that will keep you from expressing yourself, right? Um, and so sometimes it's nice to move back into a page stage and allow yourself to just play and learn stuff that like you didn't know before, whether it's from authors or spirit or people, like, it doesn't matter. Like there's something really fun about that. And as you do that, you become more comfortable and you look back and you realize Taurus that you didn't step outside of your comfort zone. You expanded that in which you are comfortable with. And that is an important distinction. You can take that to the bank. Ace of Pentacles, what did I say? What did I say? A new opportunity, a new project, <clears throat> something like that. Oftentimes when we see the Ace of Pentacles, it is an invitation to really take whatever project, opportunity, idea, whatever kind of seed of intention that is kind of being planted in your field to kind of take it all the way, allow it to be a tool that gets added into your toolbox, something that gets added to your resume, something else that you can do. I know you like to succeed, Taurus. It is a common theme of all of the earth signs. So this is something that is really going to help <clears throat> bolster your confidence and your skill set. Um, also conversation, what you can talk about, what you can talk about. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Look at this queen of swords. You might be sick of kind of having the same conversations, the same dialogues over and over and over again. Wow. <clears throat> Three of Pentacles. Yeah. This is going to widen your range, Taurus, of who 
you're able to work with and what you're able to work on. Each of the people on this card, they each have a different job, right? This is very kind of wandsy energy, right? It's very action. He's doing something. He's nailing something into the wall. Here, it's very spiritual, right? It's like this kind of bishop energy. And then there's another energy that's a bit like an architect. So it brings in a lot of those ideas of movement and intellectualism and spiritual purpose and proper planning and, and all of these things, right? It feels like part of what this Ace of Pentacles is doing is it's allowing you in many ways to widen your, oh my God, that scared me. I had a candle go out. <laughs> I had a candle go out. I was like, something is on fire. Something is on fire in this room. I have, I have, we have a plot to us today. No, everything's fine. It's just a candle light, Lauren. What it's doing in many ways, Taurus, is it is broadening your circle, your network of people that you can work with, people that you can exchange different ideas with because you're becoming versed in them too. Um, it's going to change the things that you may want to work on in the future, right? It talks a lot about collaboration in this card, but it also talks about firm foundations in what feels meaningful or purposeful to you as well. And so that for me, ties in very nicely to what I was saying before about how personally, I hope that this kind of spiritual activation that you were going through and this invitation leads to um, an increase in your quality of life, the quality of your experiences, the word richness is coming to my mind, right? And it's not something that is a huge black and white jump from what you were doing before. But it's just adding like a little spice into it. It's just adding something new, something interesting, which in many ways is kind of re-sparking that natural curiosity in many ways for life and the universe and things that you do and, and what your mind can do. Like it's, it's that sort of energy, which is really, really nice. Six of Swords, changing the perspective, transitioning into new perspectives. That's what I was talking a little bit about the spiritual plateau. The Six of Swords talks a lot about transition, but all the swords are downwards at the front of this boat, right? Which kind of talks about how you can move forward, you can start new things, but if you're still in old perspectives and beliefs, you might not get that far, right? Your boat might be a little top heavy. Um, and so I do like that this is upright because it is saying that you are being confronted with different beliefs, different ideas, which again, may be breaking up some of those really um, repetitive conversations that you're having or just the one way to view the world or the one way to view magic or the universe, right? We get very stuck sometimes in these kind of single lens views of how things work until we are presented with other information and go, wait a second. And so, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? The chariot, absolutely gorgeous. Now, again, this is confirming that you are moving forward. There's the activation comes in breaks it up, you are then being invited to start something new, which in the long run, as I was saying, the aces, they'd like to move all the way to the tent, to the broader community. So it does start opening up your social network, your spiritual network, um, maybe even working with like some different spiritual techniques or energies um, that previously you didn't even consider um, or you weren't interested in in many ways. And a lot of that is from this change in belief by stepping or widening outside your comfort zone and allowing some knowledge or these parts of you that maybe you're not super confident in, they don't feel fully developed, but like getting out there and participating anyway, right? Kind of learning on the move. And then, you know, to kind of round out your reading, we have this chariot card and this is very much of you on the move. Um, it's interesting because there's a lot of sensitivity coming off of this card. Um, and I'm wondering where that is coming from. You might be moving in a way intellectually or, or philosophically in a different direction than some people. Um, maybe your more close knit circle, people you used to exchange a lot of ideas with, but it's the idea that <clears throat> you kind of have to go outside that group um, in order to have a different, I don't want to say more fulfilling, but a different experience, right? Life is kind of made up of all of these different experiences that we have. But there is a bit of like a head and a heart battle there. Um, you might feel like you're being disloyal if like you 
broaden your circle or if you do some outside projects with people that are not normally who you would work with or share with or experience things with just remember to keep that in balance remember like head and heart um that it's not just loyal for you to enjoy a wide range of ideas or personalities people experiences it doesn't remember it doesn't have to be so black and white as we move up the tiers of gnosis your perspective becomes more neutral and it's supposed to so Taurus this is what I have for you for your reading I hope that you enjoyed this and this was helpful for you I'm going to go do an extended if you're interested in your extended or your January monthly reading your links will be down below consider joining us over on Patreon we're a little like Costco we got all the bulk content for you and the spiritual development workshop I do offer personal readings my information is below I love you very much I hope you have a wonderful day I'll see you next time goodbye